Should Texas join the national power grid? That question has been out there since that disastrous February 2021 winter freeze. And a U.S. congressman from Texas has filed legislation to try to make it happen. We're joined now by Representative Greg Kassar. He represents parts of San Antonio up into Austin. Thanks for being here. We sure appreciate it. We want to start with why. Why file this? Why do you think this needs to happen? It's been three years since winter storm Yuri, and people are still traumatized by what happened. You know, it's not something we've forgotten about. People all over Bear County and San Antonio keep bringing up to me in the heat of the summer or the cold of the winter as things get worse and worse with the climate crisis, are the lights going to stay back on? And what we know is that during that winter storm, if you were on ERCOT, Texas's independent power grid, there were 10 million people that lost power. Hundreds of Texans lost their lives. But in places like El Paso in the west of Texas and Beaumont in the east, they are interconnected to the national grids and they didn't have those mass outages. So Texans have been asking themselves why. And so I've filed the first ever bill in the US Congress to finally tackle that issue and say, let's interconnect Texas, prevent blackouts, save customers money, and tackle the climate crisis. And, and you filed this actually on the anniversary, the third anniversary of the, the winter storm that knocked out power to San Antonio and so many other places. Do you feel optimistic that this is going to get passed? Do you have colleagues that are willing to work with you on this whole thing? Absolutely. We have just on the first day of filing the bill, the majority of the Texas Democratic delegation on the bill, folks like Congressman Castro here from San Antonio, and then people, members of Congress from surrounding states, because it just makes sense that in the energy capital of America, we should be able to pull in power when we need it badly, but also really importantly, push out power when our neighbors need it badly. And it's an opportunity when the sun is shining and the wind is blowing, which happens a lot in Texas, for us to sell surplus power to those neighboring states. It's about us getting help when we need it and us helping our neighbors when they need it. That's what we believe as Texans, and that's the point of being part of the United States of America. So it makes sense for us to interconnect. So decades ago, Texas legislators decided to go their own way to avoid federal regulation, so be on their own power grid. So is that regulation something that would come into play here? And I'm sure a lot of people that are home are thinking, okay, if the lights stay on, what's the cost of this going to be for me? Power's already very expensive. So connecting Texas, would that end up costing us any more? Let, let's absolutely talk about the question of cost and the question of regulation and rules. Study after study, independent studies, the Department of Energy studies, University of Texas studies show that it's costing us billions of dollars to stay an island, to not stay interconnected. Our economy took an enormous hit during winter storm Yuri, and many studies show that it will cost us about $20 billion over the next dozen years if we don't interconnect. Everybody at home in San Antonio is probably paying a higher electric bill right now, still paying off what winter storm Yuri cost us. The only folks that benefit economically from this not interconnected grid are a privileged few big corporations that profited handsomely, made enormous sums of money during the winter storm because there was a scarcity of energy and they could jack up prices as much as they want. What we need is competition, the ability to pull in energy from other parts of the country so that we don't, uh, as consumers, get the short end of the stick and a high bill. We actually have real options. And so this will save us money. And the federal regulations that you mentioned that would kick in by having us be interconnected is called the regulation for fair and reasonable pricing. We would get federal consumer protections to make sure people don't get screwed by high electric bills. So ultimately, this will be an economic benefit for the vast, overwhelming majority of Texans. The only folks standing in the way are probably those people that really made a huge sum of money off of people's misery and things like the winter storm. Hey, Congressman Kassar, we, I have uh, read studies as well, and you and I were joking before we came on the air that you've kind of become, really all Texans have kind of become like uh, pseudo power experts in how the grid works and why it works the way it was and, and did in February of 2021. But is it feasible for Texas to hook up to the national grid? Because there are different, I mean, we're talking about a vastly different system when you're talking about the national grid than what we have in the state of Texas. And there are some that are saying w Texas would have to spend a lot of money just to upgrade its systems to what the national grid uses right now. 
this would be a huge construction project. We would need to build big wires uh, interconnecting our states so that we could have dozens of gigawatts of transmission between us and the rest of the United States. But in this moment, we know we need to upgrade our nation's infrastructure. That means upgrading our public transportation. That means upgrading our bridges and our airports. And we should be upgrading our electric system as well. That means investing in Texas's grid to make it tougher and interconnecting. That will create lots of good jobs for people in our community, things like electricians and electrical work. That is hard work. But think about the cost of not doing it. The cost of not doing it means more blackouts, more economic disruption, and still higher power costs because those electric corporations will be able to jack up rates when it gets really hot in the summer and really cold in the winter. And we know with climate change that the summers are only getting hotter and the winters are only getting colder. I, I, as a native Texan and so many other people at home know, you haven't seen summers like these or winters like these in years before, and it'll only get worse. You you talked about having the Texas Democratic delegation on board in the House of Representatives, but that's a body that's controlled by Republicans. I mean, do you honestly think that this can get out of Congress or get out of the House and go to the Senate? I feel very committed, and I feel very confident that this will become the law of the land, and here's why. It is good economics. A big part of the reason that I filed the bill is because um, we want to save lives. I was standing out there in the winter storm, carrying blankets, pulling senior, working with public transit agencies to pull seniors out of their freezing home into high school gyms. I want to save lives. But also for those folks that just care about dollars and cents, just care about the economy for, um, in Texas, this would be a huge boon for our economy and the economy of neighboring states. And so while we filed this bill as a Democratic bill to start, I expect that we will get bipartisan support because those rural Texas lawmakers and those folks that represent rural areas nearby Texas would see huge economic benefits from new wind and solar and geothermal being popping up in their parts of the state because now they'll have the opportunity not just to serve Texas consumers, but to be able to sell their surplus to nearby states. So this will be an economic win for rural Texas. It will be a win on costs for everyday consumers. And then most importantly, it'll prevent blackouts. This is a big bill to watch. We'll certainly keep tabs on it. Congressman Kassar, thanks for being here. Thanks so much. And it's really an honor to serve San Antonio in this way. Take care. Thank you for watching KSAT. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date with San Antonio's latest news and weather.